Luke's worked with many, many international clients, including the likes of Cat and Reynolds, uh, Reynolds Car Manufacturer. He speaks to thousands of people worldwide, does a lot of traveling, a lot of speaking now. Recently come back from an event in the US called uh, MozCon, which is huge. He's also spoke at the likes of uh, Search Lab, Brighton SEO, to mention a few. Please welcome Luke and give him a round of applause. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. Right, what's going on, people? I'm going to stand straight off of this stage because it scares the absolute shit out of me. Um, right, so first things first, can I just give a shout out to the cookies because they're absolutely incredible. I've had three of them so far today and I could probably get away with another one if I'm honest. Um, also, Tom from Shoes for Cruise, where are you? He's, he's, he, he may have, oh, there he is, right here. This guy has the absolute freshest shoes in the building. I don't know if you've seen them, but he put them on fresh. It must have been about 10 minutes ago, man. They were so clean. There we go. That's my man, that's my man. And finally, um, before I get started, uh, Kirsty, she's had to go, she's got things to do. But um, she gave me, like, the whole creativity thing blows my mind. So I thought I'd go outside, I'd roll around in the grass, get some oxygen in my lungs, and get super creative. And I've got a shitload of ideas that I can go home and use. Um, Probably not the best thing to do today because it's wet. Um, but yeah, in the summer, I can imagine everyone doing that. You know, year 2021, you want to get some ideas, you just roll around on your lawn and get some shit done. I love that. So I want to talk to you today about Google Analytics. So who here has heard of or has used Google Analytics? Or right, everybody, we're in the right place. Happy days. Okay. So yes, I'm an e-commerce consultant. I've done all sorts of things for bits and, people, uh, bits and pieces for all sorts of people. So large corporates down to small startups and everything in between. I love both because I need to pay my bills, but I have a preference which is probably SMEs. I love SMEs, um, but I also love education. So you guys in the corner at university, we had a chat. I spoke to some people over there. You're doing incredible things and we can talk. So um, I do e-commerce. This is what I do. But I don't want to talk about myself anymore. I want to tell you guys a bit of a story. And that story is called, I couldn't replicate the issue, so I closed the ticket story. Now, some of you in this room have worked or are developers, right? And I've got a few chuckles, so I'm guessing people can relate to this, which is you've got a problem, you send it over to dev or first line support, depending on how big your company is, and then they go, yeah, it's working for me, mate, so it must be fine. And then they close it, and it never comes to light of day again. It's just this horrible relationship that you have between tech and people. Um, and I want to tell you one of those stories. Slide too late. Here it is. So here's Jeremy Corbyn. Um, it's not. It's not. I just like the picture. And he's probably saying something that starts with an F and ends with a K. And he's not very happy. But this is a customer of one of my clients. Um, and what happened is, or was a customer for one of my clients, let me correct that real quick. So um, what happened is customers just like this guy here, Jeremy Corbyn, would call up and say, I've got problems. I came at the checkout, I've got a basket full of goodies, I want to buy some shit, I can't. Right? My card details are in, it's fine, I use this card at the co-op literally like an hour ago, there's money in the account. It's not working, it's not going through. What the hell is going on? So this happens. And what happens is customer services are dealing with these really pissed off customers and they're like, yeah, we're sorry, Mr. Corbyn, we'll fix it, we'll get onto it for you. That goes to dev. Dev fire up the same issue that's been put by customer services, punching the car details, got a basket full of stuff, works every single time. Dev close a ticket, end of the story, and it's a vicious cycle that's happening on a weekly basis. But you know for a fact, if one customer is telling you a problem, on an e-commerce site or any website, you can guarantee there's a thousand plus people who are not, who just think, fuck it, I can't bother with, right? I wanna go somewhere else, I wanna go to eBay or Amazon or something like that. And that's what must be happening for this particular client, right? So at this stage, we'll introduce you to two people. Now, if you can see any weird stuff on these images, it's not because I'm too tight to buy the rights, it's because there's something absolutely wrong with this projector, <laughs> okay? It's fine. Dave and Lucille, so who's Dave? Dave is a man who is recently single, he's living his best life right now, he's got the new Drake album, he's on fire, right? But on top of that, he's also a digital manager at an e-commerce store, okay? And um, yeah, he uses Google Analytics almost daily. He's an en enhanced e-commerce wizard, which is like a small set of reports inside GA. But one downside about Dave, he uses an out-of-the-box vanilla instance of GA. So the, the, the typical stuff you get 
in GA is what he uses. So the downside about GA for Dave in his configuration is it's cool at telling him about the sales that Dave and his company has won, but what he's not very good at is telling Dave about the sales he's lost and precisely why. Okay? So if you have an e-commerce store or if you work with any clients that are in e-commerce, you will probably recognize this report, this bar chart that gives you an indication of where in the purchase funnel people are leaving, people are abandoning their purchase. Um, and you know, what happens is you look at this, you click on different elements, but you go down a shitload of rabbit holes, okay? And you spend hours and hours deciphering data and making notes and thinking, ah, I've got it. And then realizing you haven't, you're full of shit, and you haven't got it. And then you go back to the drawing board again, and you, you could easily spend a day just looking at data in GA to find out what the heck is going on. It's expensive. People haven't got the time to waste, as we've spoken about earlier. So Dave's reports give him insights, but they don't give him any solid proof. And I think, and I've got a feeling, and they might have an inkling that, does not get prioritized. Like, it just doesn't. People don't care. Dev teams are busy. You guys are busy, right? It doesn't happen. So who's Lucille? Lucille's awesome. She's brilliant. Because Lucille is recently engaged, and she's going to Amsterdam with the girls to go you know, and celebrate, have a good time. But on top of that, Lucille is also a digital manager at the same e-commerce store in a different universe, right? She also uses GA frequently. She is also an enhanced e-commerce wizard, but she has gone beyond the standard remit of Google Analytics, right? So Lucille can get to that sweet, solid proof that we want, that we're looking for in our data quickly and get even more high-res information to make her case. So she can walk into a boardroom and be like, hey, look, I found a problem. This is what it is. So she's got some ridiculous stats that no one else can seem to get, all from GA. So as a result, Lucille gets ticket prioritized higher and closed faster, which is perfection, right? This is what you want. You have a problem, you want it to go to the top of the queue and get closed as quickly as possible. She's also saving devs a load of time by pinpointing precisely where the problems are. So everybody loves Lucille because she's saving the devs work, she's getting the C-suite buy-in, which is great, and she's just getting stuff done, right? She's got proof. So instead of looking at stuff like this, like these graphs and things that everyone sees in GA, she, instead of going to rabbit holes, she's looking at stuff like this. Error messages, which I'll come back to in a little while, because the text is kind of small, so I don't expect you to be able to read that. So going back to my story for a second of this pissed off Jeremy Corbyn guy. So Lucille was able to use data that she now collects in her super cool GA rig and an error message you can see is payment error 1007 at the checkout specifically. So customers are moaning at the checkout. There's an error message that seems to fire at the checkout. What is going on? So Lucille goes to Google. She fires in error 1007, Sage Pay. And what it basically means is the card number has failed our validity checks and is invalid. That's a nice way of saying wrong card number. Okay? So... Payment failed, error 1007, please call sales on, was switched for invalid card number, please check and retry. Nice, simple English. As a result of doing that, 30 grand a day uplifting sales, like that. Because, found a problem, saw the data, fixed it, got it prioritised. And she knew that thousands of people every single day were seeing this error message. So it wasn't just Jeremy Corbyn and his mates calling to say I've got a problem. There was evidential proof. But it gets better, and I will show you how. So what I want to work with you today is to show you how to build a badass Google Analytics rig just like Lucille. First of all, starting with custom definitions. Does anyone in this room know what custom definitions are? Brilliant. I'm happy about that because it means I'm not wasting my time and I'm not going to burn your ears. It's late. We're tired. We want to go home and drink, right? Or drink here or whatever. Um, what are they? Well, custom definitions allow you to send custom data into Google Analytics, which doesn't sound like much, but it's great. And they can be applied to almost any data set in GA, almost any report that you have in your reporting suite. So if you have your all pages report, which everyone normally is quite familiar with, you can add custom dimension as a column to any one of these particular pages or these pages reports. Also, if you build custom reports in GA, you can add them here as well. 
And the great thing about custom dimensions or custom definitions, they're not sampled. So it's not a sample of data, it's all the data, with a caveat depending on how much traffic you have and whether you're on GA360 or the standard free one. Um, so, quick video. If this doesn't work, it's fine, don't need it, don't need it, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, it's so simple, we don't need a video, it's okay. Um, but what I wanted to show, there's like three clicks that you do in the admin of GA, and it's basically, if I remember, settings, custom definitions, and then basically two or three clicks. But the point here is, then there's some cool stuff you do in GTM, Google Tag Manager, and I've included some links, don't worry, that's not it, that's not, I'm not gonna leave you like that. So there's a lot of links and things and resources and walkthroughs you can do to configure this sort of stuff for yourself, okay? But I just wanted to use that video, which didn't work, to show you how easy it was to do. Um, one perfect application, as I've used in my story, is capturing error messages, right? Now, in the world of e-com, or any website, error messages are a thing, whether it's like a login issue, or a payment failed issue, or sorry, we're having technical difficulties issue, any kind of error message, right, that the customer can see. But using it as a custom dimension allows the user to identify, or allows you, as a marketer, to identify how many people are seeing this error message, and precisely on what pages they're seeing it on. So, you can answer questions like these, which are really powerful questions. First one, what errors are firing at the checkout, and how many visitors are seeing them? So in Lucille's case, it was like 9%, which is a pretty damn big deal when you think about the checkout, right? Are there errors that could be rewritten to improve the UX or CRO? Now, does anyone here have a role in their business that allows someone to rewrite error messages? Didn't think so, no one does. This is my point. But if you can be in a situation where you can prove it's a problem, but then again, actually, let me ask you another question. Which team does that go into? Is it content? Because I don't think so. It's a technical message, right? Is it SEO? No, because it's got nothing to do with Google. Is it UX? Maybe, but this doesn't fall into UX's remit. The point is, there is no role in a typical marketing structure where this data is fixed. But if you at least you've got it in GA, you can identify the problem and put it to where it needs to be done. And this is where you think about completing stuff rather than fulfilling a certain role. You've got a problem here, go and fix it. Literally, go and fix it. What pages display the most errors? Now this is super powerful, because if you've got a website, whether it's e-commerce or not, you've got forms, probably a contact form. How many times does it say to people, invalid first name, or invalid email address, or you need to complete the capture and tick all the boxes that have a vehicle in and some, like, frustrating, right? If you can find out and quantify how big of a problem that is, read it on your form, change your form, make it easier, okay? What errors are hurting conversions the most? Big question. Now, if someone asked you without, without this kind of insight, who, how would you go? Where would you turn to to get this sort of information? You might go to devs, you might go to marketing, you might go to your SEO teams, but typically, no one really knows. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that. So this is one of my clients. GDPR friendly slide, thanks for that. I thought I've got the client name on there, I haven't. So, um, <laughs> whew, error messages. And I wanna show you this. So. First, the biggest message that is causing an abandonment rate for this particular client is, error message, sorry, unrecognized username or password, have you forgotten your password? This is one day's worth of data. So 157 people are seeing that message. Now, if you ask me, you walk into a boardroom and normally it's a case of, can we talk about what's in the sprint today? Can we talk about what's in the dev queue today? Can we talk about what we're doing for the, for the quarter? Actually, mate, forget all of that shit. Let's go and fix this, because this will make the money, right? What's the fix? Turn on guest checkout, problem solved, okay? And if you can't turn on guest checkout, then that's cool, but here's how much money you're potentially losing. All of a sudden, it's gone from uh, someone arguing about with something, somebody else about what's a priority to kind of saying, well, I can tell you that 5% of my customer base is seeing this thing every single day, you just need to go and fix it, right? You've got data, statistics. This is one I personally love, and it's for, for e-commerce, but you can use it in other things as well. Um, so if you have like a lead value, or a potential average kind of uh, lead cost or something like that, you can use it here. So as I said earlier, Google Analytics is not great at reporting the sales you've lost. It just isn't. It's good at telling you about the sales you've won. You can see it in the reports. So again, this, no. We wanna look at lost basket value. So what does it mean? That allows you, it's a bit difficult to explain, but that allows you 
to identify all of the baskets that you didn't convert and accumulate that into a pocket of revenue. So you can work out, yes, we've sold seven million quid this month of this, but actually we lost 21 million pounds in potential sales and being clever enough to double down on that, which I'll show you in a second. So where did we lose the most potential sales? Was it the checkout? Was it the homepage? Was it the, I don't know, email channel? Was it due to stock, for example? What does slow website performance cost us? So you can find out if you are in a situation where you want to invest in a faster server, for example, find out if you make something fast for just like a trial over maybe a week, if you lose less sales, you have actual monetary gains to say, look, we put in a faster server for a week, or we have a case to make a website faster. We lost 300,000 pounds less sales in a month as a result of spending a grand extra a month on our server. It's not even a conversation worth having. You just go and fix it. You've got the raw data, right? How much cash are we losing due to that same error message? So the one I showed you earlier about error message, uh, forgotten username and password, right? This particular client, that error message was costing them 27,000 pounds a day, right? 27 grand because people couldn't log in to thought, forget it. I'll go to Amazon. I'll go to, well, not Best Buy. Well, yeah, Best Buy in this case or wherever in the US they are. They're losing that kind of money every single day due to the fact that there's no guest checkout. So again, imagine being an absolute badass, right? And you got the board, everyone's got their teas and coffee and biscuits, and how's your, yeah, how was your weekend, good weekend, all that bullshit, right? So you step in and you're like, right, okay, can we just crap, can we just crap? Like all this stuff isn't important. I have found a 27,000 pound loss that we're making every single day. We should go fix it, right? Hell yes, go and fix it, right? So this is now solved, problem's gone, turned on. 27 grand back in the black. So how does a lost basket value def uh, dimension work? So this is where it gets technical, um, but it's still, I just want to kind of give you a flavor of how this sort of thing works. I haven't got an extra slide for that, so it's all on me. Okay. Um, so what happens is, I can't remember. Um, what happens is <laughs> when you have, when your customer has a number of goods in their basket and they, so they add another thing to their basket. Let's say they've got four things in their basket to a total of 100 pounds. They add a fifth one, that value updates to 125 pounds. If they, at that point, abandon, then that basket value is 125 pounds, right? But if they go on and make a purchase, that lost basket value turns to zero because they've made a purchase. So you're in a situation where you can identify the sales you've lost and all the events that led up to the sales they lost, the error messages, the page views, the exit pages, the checkout uh, issues they saw, the page speed. So if you've got a page that's like 10 seconds to load, and that's what's costing you, and you can see it's costing you 30 grand, 40, 50, 60, 100,000 pounds a month. Guess what? That's all you need to fix this week. Well, forget all this new shiny stuff, let's have a new website, which, don't get me wrong, is important, but let's not think about replacing the old until we understand <laughs> what's wrong with it before we make it better. This one, I love. And if anyone here, is anyone here in paid search? Okay, we've got a few hands. Anyone in econ paid search? Okay, nobody. All right, this isn't that important, but it uh, kind of is. Maybe I'm being narrow-minded, but capturing product stock status in GA. So, who's ever been in a meeting where it's like, Brian, I like pulling random names out of the air, but Brian, can you tell me why SKU number 12345 is down by 18% this week? My name's Brian for a second. I want to step in and say, yes, Mr. CEO. I can tell you why it's down this week. It's because for three of the seven days, we didn't have no damn stock. So what do you want me to do? Like literally, we're in a situation where, if you think about like from SEOs, okay, from an SEO point of view, we all work to help rankings and stuff, but there's factors outside of what we do. If you don't have the stock, how are you supposed to rank for it? If you don't have the stock, how are you supposed to sell it? If your price went up by 20%, how are you supposed to sell at the same rate? What I'm trying to say here is there's variables outside of just a direct channel of paid search versus SEO. So if you can capture really cool stuff like stock status, then it can teach you a heck of a lot. You can start to answer things like this. Is that the same slide? Did it change? I think it might have changed. Anyway, I'm going to pretend it did. So when an item has low stock, how does it impact conversion? Um, promotional statuses in Google Analytics, you can capture this stuff as well. This is really powerful. How does a price reduction or offer impact conversion for these very specific items? So, does a three for two or a one third off work better? And I don't mean as a general statement, I mean per item. You can see whether you've got one third off is actually converting better 
than a three for two. Or whether a three for two is converting at a higher AOV, and if you're happy to take the conversion loss as a result of that, then that's cool. But you can have that data by capturing it in GA. However, they're all really good things. There are a few limitations to custom definitions. One of which, when you can set these up in GA, they cannot be deleted, okay? So it's not great. It's Google's way of making you go away and buy the six-figure GA360 thing, which is what everybody, that's what Google wanted to be on. So once you create them, you can't delete them. On top of that, you can only have 20 of them. Bastards. So you can quickly be in a situation where you think, you can easily probably think of right now, 20 custom definitions you can work in your head. Three for twos, error messages, stock statuses. Outside of the world of education, you're thinking, honors degrees, BSc, or what kind of course type? Is it a short, is it adult education? Like, before you know it, you've got loads. You've run out of them. So you've got to be careful which ones you choose. You've got to be frugal with how you select these. So, I see this a lot. Got one left, one left. And there's literally nothing you can do about it. It's like literally an oh shit moment. Um, but hey, just making you aware of that beforehand. But the good news is, where custom definitions get ugly, events get sexy. These are really cool. So a lot of people know events more than they do custom dimensions, um, which I'll explain in a little second. But firstly, there's no limitations on the number of events that you can have. So you can go wild, have as many as you want. But there are nuanced differences, okay? So custom definitions, by a rough definition I've just kind of made up, custom definitions tell you what, and events tell you when. So for example, a three for two or a third is the what. The when <laughs> is like an offer, just like a generic, an offer was displayed to a customer. So there are differences in terms of how they work. So more examples here. A dimension would be transaction type. Was it a purchase? Was it a quote? Was it an inquiry? Was it a lead? Um, customer type, were they logged in or not? Were they a guest or were a VIP or whatever? Stock status, mentioned that one earlier. Metrics, how much, quantifiable amount, and events, what happened? So a purchase was made or a quote was sold or somebody added something to the basket. There's, there's nuances between them. But there's no hard and fast rules. So you can build your GA how you want to, how it suits your business and your reporting team. But events can also be used to power goals, and custom dimensions can't. So GA and goals is quite a synonymous, right? Um, someone buys something, or someone uh, does something that you consider a good behavior, leaves a lead, or fills out a form. Um, you can have a bunch of events that fire to a conversion. So what I'm trying to say to you is there's things that both of them can do. It really just depends on the application you have here. I'm gonna skip, is anyone here a developer? No, okay, this is not important, let's move on. So, um, there's no point boring you to death, it's late. Come on, we want to go and get drunk. So, um, all pages. And what I wanted to show you here is this basket reference. Some of these aren't GDPR friendly nowadays, all right? I apologize, but it's still kind of good if you can anonymize some of the references. But the point I want to make you here is that this is how you add custom dimensions into your reports. If you go to all pages, secondary dimension, there's a button here. And if you scroll down to custom dimensions, they're all here, and you can add them to whatever you want. Um, when it comes to your events, this is how you fire events up in GA. So events, top events, event category, event action, event label. So category, you might have, for example, as like purchase, um, and then action. No, hold on, let me think of something else. No, that works. So event category could be, yeah, purchase. Event action could be click. Uh, and then event label could be the amount that they've decided to purchase. But events are quite easy to integrate, okay? So again, it just depends on what it is you're looking to do. I love this one. I absolutely adore, this is my absolute favorite. And I'll be frank with you, this is how I make most of my money, okay? Because I cannot tell you, in the world of e-commerce, or in the world of anything that has an internal search engine, this is massive. For an event, when a search returns, no results. And I cannot tell you how easy it is to implement. So I went to AO.com and decided to be a dickhead for a bit. <laughs> and I searched for supercalifragilistic espialidocious. I've not had a beer, I can say it, it's brilliant. I guess it fired no results, which is a bit of a shame, right? My point here is, I wonder if AO now know that I've searched for that and that there's no results being found. So this is how you do it. So you basically just get your devs to do this, which is category, site search, action, no results, 
label the search term value is one. If you literally take a picture of one slide, do that, send it to your devs, and I'm telling you, it will make a big difference. So you can confidently answer questions like this. What are the items that, sorry, did somebody want to take a picture? Uh, I just want to see if you're paying attention, that's all. Okay, go for it. It's going to cost you. No, I'm joking, right, hold on. It's all yours, it's all yours. Okay, we're good, we're good? All right, awesome. So you can confidently answer questions like this. What are the items that customers are looking for that we don't sell? Now, to give you an example, I have a client that is in the internet networking space. They put in networking equipment in place like this. Actually, who's the, who are the Wi-Fi guys here? These two ladies here. Right, brilliant. We had dinner last night, right? Not, not just me and the girls. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded really bad. Um, but my point being, shit, I forgot what I was banging on about. Uh, they sell, well, they didn't sell, but they had a lot of people searching for rack drawers, like the network cabinet, rack drawers. They don't do rack drawers, but they had probably hundreds of people every single week searching for rack drawers. But because we built the event in that says, when they search for this, fire this event, and sorry, when they search for this and no results are found, fire this, they identified all of the items that people were searching for that they didn't sell. Guess what they sell now? Rack drawers, right? Right, quick question. I'm gonna ask this lady here, because you're nice and close. Um, what does that say? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> I wanna give someone else. I'm gonna pick yourself now, because you've got a really nervous face, so I'm gonna pick you straight away. <laughs> what do you think that says? I don't know, right? No. no? Yeah, see? No one knows. Right, let me tell you something about this brand. This is the world's second largest manufacturer of security cameras. They sell billions of things every single year, and you can't even pronounce the damn name, right? Here's my point. For this particular client, these were all the variances of that particular word you saw here and how people search for it. So Delaware, kind of looks like a, like a, like a D-A-L kind of, it's weird, right? It doesn't make any sense. Whoever did that logo needs to be shot. Um, <laughs> Delaware, Alaware, Dower, Oliwa, blah, blah. Right, actually, the right spelling's not even on there, actually. Uh, it's actually D-A-H-U-A, -A. there's no L in it. So you think, like, that Dawa, right? right? The actual brand name is Dahua. So imagine me on the phone call and be like, yeah, yeah, can I get like 50 Dahua cameras, please? How do you spell that? My point here is, all of these are misspellings. And all of these misspellings, people search for and they couldn't find products. So imagine like, I don't know, everyone's buying Balenciagas now because, you know, they're like 600 pounds a pair. It's ridiculous, right? Um, Tom sells them probably, I don't know. Um, but how do you spell Balenciaga? Because I don't know. I mean, Google will probably correct me, but not when I'm on, say, Balenciaga.com, for example, or not when I'm looking at Foot Locker and I'm looking to buy these things. Um, imagine if Leacock Sportif was still a brand. Like, just no one can spell that. No one. Oh, I've got the right spelling. Here it is. It's, yeah. <laughs> but you pronounce it Dahua. Okay? It's, it's a Chinese brand. Um, see? <laughs> Dahua. Don't even get me started on this one. Does anyone know who this is? Yeah? How do you say it? Come on. Date, Date yeah, yeah. All right, fair enough. <laughs> no, you're wrong. No, that's right. Um, so what misspellings are we not optimizing for and how often are they searched? Okay, this is an important one. If you've got brands, if you sell brands, if you are a brand, if your brand is spelt weird, if you're one of those idiots that doesn't help people that can't spell, then you're the problem. Like even courses, right? Like if you think about university for a second, like degrees are like this long now. You just used to go to uni to study IT, and now it's like computer networks to security and to be a badass and all this sort of stuff at the end. <laughs> I just want to, you know, so all of this stuff is really important. If you have a search engine that serves recipes, that serves e-commerce products, that serves content and knowledge base, you need to know this stuff. It's important. What not, I love this one as well, right? So what non-commerce queries are our customers searching for? So again, this works for everything, but works really well in e-commerce. So returns policy or how do I send this back? Or can you tell me if this is my size? You would be amazed the amount of crap that people search for when you're paying attention to it. Um, and my point here is, just because they're not searching for a product doesn't mean you can't serve them a response, right? It's important. 
But you can take this further than just search too. Flag all empty product categories. Um, so, the Home Depot. I know they're not here, we can't buy from them, but I think they're cool because their SEO is horrendous. Does anyone here know a Home Depot? <sighs> Thank God for that. Right, so, um, they sell stuff like this. Here's a category that has zero products in it. I can't tell you how many views it gets, but you can imagine it's probably in the thousands, if not tens of thousands on a monthly basis. No products. And last but not least, I want to give you a report um, that needs zero development, so you haven't really got to get your devs involved for most people, and it takes just a few minutes to set up. So everyone here is au fait with like a 404, right? Yeah, all right, cool. Um, 404s are normally prioritized by SEO impacts. If you go into Search Console, or if you're old school like me, Webmaster Tools, thank you very much, um, what they will do is give you a list of all the 404s that are prioritized by how many people have linked to those particular pages, right? So you go and fix number one, and you feel like a badass because you've reconnected loads of links and stuff. Wrong. And I'll tell you why you're wrong, because Google Analytics, or Google itself, will not prioritize 404s by how many of your visitors see them. They prioritize 404s by impact to their eco space. So if you can prioritize 404, that's sorted by customer impact. And what I mean by that is how much it's hurting your conversion, for example, or um, how many people are seeing these, then it's really powerful. Because if you connect to 404, that's got thousands of visits every single month, that's going to be a heck of a lot more impactful for your business than one that's directly impactful for SEO. This is about UX, right? The last thing you want as a consumer is to be potentially spending money, go into a page from Google, and it's broken. Trust is gone. You're about to hand over your hard earned for these people, right? Go and fix those things. So, PDF files, I hate them. I absolutely hate them because they're so difficult to redirect. But my point here is for this particular client, this was like, what, 10 days, 11 days? This particular PDF, 392 hits. Now, I don't know what this PDF is. I don't really care, to be honest. But what I do care about is the fact that 392 people are trying to find this document. This could be um, like a sales thing. This could be some legal documentation. This could be their terms and conditions for Owena. And all these people tried to find it. But Google Search Console will not tell you about this because it doesn't impact SEO, but it does impact your customers. Plus some other ideas. And for anyone who here is in SEO and or PPC, I'm on a webinar um, for SEM Rush tomorrow at 5 p.m. Um, I'm basically going to be, I'm from a team SEO, so I'm going to basically be like going in on PPC and telling them why SEO is better. Um, but also at the end of it, what we will do is come together and work out ways in which SEOs and PPCs can work better together. So if you can join me in that, it'd be great. So there's loads of cool stuff. There's that report, there's that link to the SEM rush thing, there's a blog post, and I write about loads of stuff as well. Um, if you go to that link, lukecarthy.com slash lovingbound, it'll be there. Um, these are links I promised. I don't expect you to scribble them down now because it will take you forever, but um, they're all in there. And finally, be more Lucille. Thank you very much. Thank you.